Hello and welcome to Division Analysis. I'm Fog. Today we're on a journey in a search for truth. And there will be some statistical tr truths that will surprise you. And there are going to be some harsh truths that are going to burn. Hope you're ready. The first harsh truth is that we need a better metric than burst DPS. In the last video I showed you that DPS is a measure of damage over time and that unless you control one of those, either damage or time, then the comparison is useless. I also showed uh, sustained versus, versus burst fire DPS. In this, I'm showing you five enemies being burst down, separated by reloads. The truth is, is that sustained fire will have already finished killing all of those enemies at this point. If we control the time and allow them both the same amount of time with which to do their damage, then once again we see that burst fire comes up short. That's because sustained damage is the maximum amount of damage that your weapon can output. So much so, it's actually the meta. The most effective tactic available. I have my test build on. I've got my FAMAS and I've got my ACR. This is just a, an example of how if it is available, then sustained fire is the best way to deliver damage. Hamas is now bursting down each of the enemies and reloading each, reloading each time. Last reload doesn't count. 25 seconds. Now we will use sustained fire. Continually and sustained. There we go, I can even miss a few shots and still end up half a second quicker to kill all of those enemies. Here it is, different weapons, slower, speed, higher base damage. First thing, reloading. There it is. Last reload doesn't count, don't need to do it. 28.8 seconds. Here we go, sustained. Now I say it's the most effective tactic available when it is available. Sometimes it is absolutely necessary to burst fire, to pop in and out of cover, because you know what's really bad for your DPS? Is dying. But here we go, ACR 27.7, a full second quicker on sustained. Now I'll, I will accept that burst firing is necessary, but what I won't accept is being on the firing range, dropping 51 rounds at full auto, reloading as fast as humanly possible, then dropping 51 rounds again, it's actually 50, but, but then having someone tell me that exactly the same build with exactly the same weapon somehow magically does another 75% damage. And yet that's what we're supposed to believe with regards to burst DPS. You cannot do more damage than full auto followed by reload. Sustained DPS is total mag damage over the time to fire and the reload time. Burst DPS is simply the total mag damage over the time to fire. So essentially we're just discounting the last reload. Now as I alluded to before when we're in the shooting range, it's only when all the targets are down that the last mag doesn't count. Because all the damage is to be done. 
with burst fire DPS you cannot maintain the DPS numbers without reloading. This is burst DPS. It's literally just that first magazine. That's the only time that you'll ever sustain those because you're not counting that next reload. But it is statistically, mathematically, physically, scientifically impossible to go from here to here without going through here. That's not how reality works. Even if we were to use burst DPS, it doesn't consider maintaining how long each weapon can actually maintain that burst fire, that burst DPS. This is the timings for all those weapons. And burst DPS literally only compares them across this amount of time. Now there's going to be some people that want to hang on to burst DPS because it's like a trophy one. It looks pretty. But unfortunately, it's completely made up and fake. What if I have to wait between firing and then shoot again? How does that work in these calculations? Well, that's where maths is beautiful. It, it doesn't care. You have asked it, what is the maximum amount of damage that you can sustain over that duration? It doesn't care that you waited to do the extra damage, it will remove and just combine it all as if you were 100% accurate and that there was no break. It's just telling you the total mag damage over the time it takes to fire that mag. What about if I have to burst, I have to pop out, there's shooting, I can't... I just need a burst, I just need it. He's behind a pole now. I can't see him. Oh, yep, there he is. Pop him out. Take him down. Once again, the equation doesn't care. You can do whatever you like in between those bursts. It's just going to tell you what is the maximum damage output. Now, this is the one that people that are in love with burst DPS and those numbers are going to come back with. Is that I don't have to count the reload because I did it while I was moving. I'm moving, I'm reloading on the move. Now that may be the best tactic to do that. But once again, the equation doesn't care. You can do whatever you like during that time. It's going to take that away and it's just going to tell you what the maximum is. Except, it's certainly going to say, I'm sorry, you don't have a 76 round magazine. That is not possible. The maximum that you could have done is this. The only time that a reload doesn't count is when all the damage is done and you can walk over to the ammunition box and look, my weapon is now magically refilled. So when all the damage is done, that's when it can, that's when it doesn't count. So can we finally, please, let Burst DPS rest in peace? I know, we've all wasted hundreds of hours on spreadsheets that involve Burst DPS. There's countless videos on it. But I think it's time to say goodbye. Yes, I told you and I warned you, some of these truths will burn. Okay, so looking forward, what's going to be the new metric? Well, I've already identified that sustained DPS is the best and most effective tactic in order to get damage out, but I also recognize that there are many times where burst fire is all that you can do, all that you want to do. So. The new one is the average between those two. So sustained DPS is calculated in the normal way with total mag damage over the time to fire mag and the reload time, except we will not count the reload if there is one to be had after all the damage is done. Total mag damage is calculated by the average bullet damage 
times the mag capacity. Time to fire hasn't changed. But what does average bullet damage look like? Well, glad you asked. In my first video, I showed how to calculate the bullet damage figures. In my second video on uh, DPS, in the shooting range, I showed you a little bit about chance of occurrence and how that works. Go back, watch those to understand how the average bullet damage is calculated. So burst fire DPS. So burst fire DPS, although the amount of time that we actually pop out of cover is sometimes less, sometimes more, from my testing, it generally averages out to be around about the number that is equivalent to the average number of bullets to kill an average enemy that you're fighting. And that will be divided by the time to fire those bullets and the reload time. So the same as sustained DPS, except this time we're just firing less bullets. Well, of course, we are still going to subtract the last reload at the end of when all the damage is done. What does an average enemy look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. I just spent a very large amount of time playing every single mission in the game on heroic level with my test build. I gathered a huge amount of statistics, including the total amount of health from all the enemies that were killed, the number of enemies, uh, along with a number of others, which I'll tell you about right now. So each mission three times over meant that the total health pool for all those enemies was 56 billion and there was 8061 enemies which means that the average heroic mission enemy is just over 7 million health points for control points it was 9.7 billion and it was 1134 enemies which averaged out to be a little over eight and a half million per enemy. Well, that's their total health pool or hit points. What about their total armor? Now, this one I was actually very surprised about. Heroic missions, they averaged 60% red, 23% purple, 15% elite, 2% named. Now, what that actually means is that across heroic missions the average enemy is only 25% armor. I was shocked. I was shocked. For heroic control points it was an average of 20% red, 15% veteran, 60% elite and 5% named which meant that they averaged 55% armor. That was also still lower than what I would I had originally thought. What is the average wave of enemies before we get our free reload or before a checkpoint? In heroic missions, it was a little over 8, about 8.1. Um, so I rounded it to 8. And for heroic control points, I've set it at the midway point between attacking and defending, which meant there was an average of 16 enemies. Out of cover. Now, this one was an absolute bitch to get. But because my uh, test build has unique values for armor damage, for uh, health damage, and for out of cover damage, I was able to determine when an enemy was in cover and out of cover. For instance, this chick who looks like she's hanging in the breeze is in fact in cover until she gets staggered, at which point she goes out of cover. The worst offenders are all the grenadiers and the uh, drone chicks and the like. This chick is also in cover right now. In cover until this point here where she's staggered and then returns to health damage. So when I initially engaged an enemy, they were 26% of the time still in cover. 
or 74 percent out of cover but the number of shots that was landed that counted as out of cover was in fact 82 percent because quite often they would be staggered and hop and uh, would force them out of cover that was a mission now in average engagement distance this one I've decided to postpone an average engagement distance doesn't actually tell us a lot what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm getting a percentage of the time that the enemies were actually at certain distances this will inform a future video that I've got in regards to uh, optimal range. It'll also inform um, like my deep dive on the coyote's mask. But the way that I did it is I would have an engagement and then I would take out my grenade um, and then that would show me the distance to all the points where I engaged enemies. I didn't always remember, which means that I also need to go back into these missions and get that data again. They weren't taking chances. We've got to press on. You're headed for a small dam just north of your position. So, this is the one subjective factor that I'm including here as far as it's a statistic. Because it's my average headshots. I thought I was quite good at headshots. And as it turns out, I'm killing almost one in every three enemies with a headshot. But what really surprised me when I worked it all out is that the number of headshots I landed was actually only 8%. So how does that work? 8% landed but 31% of the time I killed. Well there's a number of factors. Um, first of all, as you can see from the footage, there are a lot of enemies that actually don't have heads. So that's number one. Number two uh, there are a lot of enemies where you are actively avoiding shooting them in the head either in the weak points or avoiding their helmet uh, number, th number three is that a headshot carries more damage and so you're actually statistically more likely to kill an enemy with a headshot and that's going to be important because later on down the track uh, when I do a deep dive into some of the talents, talent activation um, based on kill percentages for crits and also headshots, um, it, plays a, it plays a factor. But still, it was surprising. Only 8% of the time was I actually, of all the bullets that I landed, was it in fact a headshot. So, what does that look like and what does it all mean? What it all means is that now I have all of the stats and the inputs that I need to comfortably determine what an in-game DPS for a weapon would look like. I have the average enemy hit points being 7.8 million, average number of enemies per wave is 12, so that sets the damage, the amount of damage that needs to be done. Uh, the armor, the average out of cover, and the average number of headshots informs the calculations in regards to what the average bullet damage is and I'm, I'm excited I'm excited because the next video that's coming out is going to be assault rifle comparisons using these in-game statistics and um, at this point in time I haven't done the calculations I actually don't know which weapon is going to come out best and what the order is going to look like so I'm excited to get stuck into the calculations um, I'm also excited to be done with all the missions and control points uh, and looking over all of the footage more than anything else be happy to be done with that but um, there is a lot of content to come there is a lot of content to come so if you like the video like it if you appreciate the amount of work subscribe share and I will see you in the next one